All right, guys, hold up, hold everything, stop the presses. Everything is fine in the mainstream comic book industry. Marvel and DC are just fine, according to this article from Screen Rant. Everything is cool. It's all good. The mainstream industry is fine. Everybody's getting rich. Uh, everybody's making all kinds of money. Uh, comic shops are not going out of business at a shocking rate. Uh, everybody's buying everything that's being put out, and, and comics have never been better. It's literally, it's literally raining money, guys. It, it really is. Actually, we all know that is not the truth. We're going to talk about more shops going out of business. We're going to talk about trying to guesstimate where comic book sales actually are. And we're going to talk about how broke a lot of comic book professionals are. A lot of them are begging for money on the internet. Again, I mean, they always kind of have, but like there seems to be more of them begging for money. And a lot of the people that are begging are people that were bragging about how much money they were getting from Netflix deals or whatever. It's not good. It's not a good situation. If you say anything about it, if you say anything about it, you get dogpiled like Mark Miller did. Mark Miller, who's one of the biggest writers in mainstream comics right now, uh, got dogpiled for calling people out that were trying to cancel people that were speaking the truth, that the comic book industry is not in a good place. Uh, if you say that, you're an alt-right bigot Nazi hater or some nonsense like that. Uh, so we're going to we're gonna talk about this Um it's just, it's really sad. It's, it's sad. I don't like doing comic book videos anymore. I used to, because I used to be like, hey, yeah, cool, we were right. And I'm like, God, ah, shit, we were right. Like, there, there's nothing to go back to. And graphic novels are doing well, and manga's doing well, so don't even get in the comments saying that kind of crap. Everybody knows that. You can buy the stuff at Walmart. You can buy it in, on Amazon. It's doing fine. Manga's fine. Graphic novel sales are fine. That's not what we're talking about, and you know it. We're talking about the direct market. We're talking about comic shops, the LCSs. They're not fine. The floppy comics, not fine. And if it collapses tomorrow, there will be hundreds, if not thousands, of people put out of work. Uh, yeah, there are going to be some people that make the jump to graphic novels or webtoons or whatever, but that's going to be account for probably less than 5% of the people that are working in comics now. I mean, it's a very, very uh, narrow sales channel. That's why people like, you know, Dave Pilkey and Raina Telgemeier make the money they make because they don't have a lot of competition. There's not really a lot of competition when you're being published by Scholastic and Scholastic is pushing your stuff at book fairs and Scholastic is very picky about who they take. They're not going to saturate the market with graphic novels. They're going to let about 10 or 12 of you in and then they're going to keep promoting your books, and that's it. That's how it's going to work. So let's let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, no woohoos in this video. This is a pretty down video anyway. Geeky's not here. Go out and support us making comics. Uh, go out to shopclownfish.com, Crimson Wren Volume 1, and previously on Clownfish TV. Both of them in stock, ready to ship, ready to go. Uh, you got about 10 days, I guess, on these until um, we're going to wrap this campaign up, and I don't know when they're going to be back. Uh, Crimson Wren Volume 1 will probably be back whenever we do a campaign for Crimson Wren Volume 2, uh, but I don't even know when that's going to be. I got to talk to got to talk to Jose. We got to talk, coordinate on that one, and I don't know when these books are going to be back. So back them now. Back them now, guys, what I'm saying. So look, I'm going to read this article from Screen Rant. I think this is trolling comic book fans because they know it's going to get a lot of hits, but, uh, you know, the comic book industry, it's all fine here, guys. Uh, meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, we've got articles like this. Comic stores 2023 is nearly 2024, and I'm more than concerned from the owner of Coliseum of Comics, which, uh, again, Heidi McDonald from The Beat dragged this guy, said they didn't fulfill their uh, pool list, their customer service was not good. And he uh, actually got, I guess, the guy that was in charge of the pool list got into it with, with her on Twitter. We have another comic retailer that infamously whacked the beehive uh, and got uh, Mark Miller involved saying that, uh, you know, people don't want their legacy characters to be changed for no damn reason to become self inserts for uh, untalented writers, which is not an untrue statement. We've got so many articles about comic shops that have been in business for decades, decades going out of business this year. This year, just they're all collapsing because I think a lot of them 
took, well, they had the pandemic and there was a little bit of a bump during the pandemic because people were buying back issues and stuff like that. They got through the pandemic, but a lot of them took uh, PPP loans out, I think to survive and uh, that money's out. And honestly, my understanding, uh, is that a lot of people got back into comics during the pandemic because they needed something to do, just like they got in the tabletop because they needed something to do. And then they realized that, hey, the version of Dungeons and Dragons we're playing is not the same version they're playing on Stranger Things, and I don't like it very much. And also, hey, the current comic books, yeah, they suck. Most of them suck. And uh, I'm not going to continue reading them. They suck and they're overpriced. And I have to go out of my way to go find them to some comic shop somewhere. And... Uh, it's just not, uh, it's not working out very well. We had Jim Hanley's universe going out in Manhattan. That's okay. They have another one off the beaten path. You know, that's okay. It's okay. That's okay then, right? It's like, did, did you see that? The one thing I did like about the Doctor Who uh, special, The Giggle, with uh, Neil Patrick Harris when he was a toy maker, was he goes through and is like, all the Doctor's companions have died or have, they've had some horrible fate. But it's okay because there's a twist where it's not quite death, but almost. And that's kind of where we're at right now. Like, but that's okay. It's okay. They can still sell on eBay. It's okay. You know, uh, Scholastic is still around and manga, manga sales are great. It's okay that everybody else is going to be eating dog food. Everybody else is going to be looking at, uh, uh, no retirement, no future, uh, no comic conventions. I think comic conventions are going to kind of drop off too, you know, cause the interest in comics culture is going down, especially the movies. Yeah, but it's it's okay, guys. Uh, now, according to uh, Google's generative AI experiment, which is going to kill off a lot of journalists, by the way, not literally, but it's going to kill the need for blogs. They're saying um, 25% of comic stores plan to close by 2023 or by the end of 2023. Now, they're citing someone else's video. So Comics B has been trying to figure out how many comic shops we have left, and they can't figure it out. And I don't understand how they don't know. You know, I mean, it is harder to keep track of because everybody used to go through Diamond and now everything's kind of up in the air. And it's the same with sales, too. You know, we have no idea, no idea um, what's going on. I know Mark Miller posted on Twitter that another comic shop has, has gone out. This is one in Ohio, Comic Town, closing after 30 years in business. You know, they flew him out for a signing, you know, but this guy just hates retailers, right? He doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, he just wants to see the comic book industry suffer. Um, and, and this is every week. This is every week we're seeing another comic shop close. And I think going into 2024, we're going to see a lot more close as they look at the results from last year. And you're like, is it worth doing? And a lot of the people that own these shops, let's be honest, they're getting, they're getting older and they're probably like, can I sell this business? Probably not. Um, am I over 60, over 70? Is it time to nope out? Probably. It probably is. It's a good time to nope out because where do we go from here? You know, the product is unsellable. The new product for a lot of them, it's unsellable. A lot of them didn't pivot to graphic novels. A lot of them, like even here, this looks like Funko Pops. There's a whole bunch of Funko Pops. Well, guess what? Those have bottomed out too. Magic the Gathering, guess what? That's bottomed out too. The comic book movies are doing great. So people are going to come buy comic books. No, they didn't. They didn't go buy comic books because the comic book movies were doing great. Now the comic book movies aren't doing great. Yep. You know, manga's fine, but you know where you can get manga literally everywhere, even Walmart and target, you know, Amazon. I, I mean, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else, you know, what other proof you need that things are not good. We've got creators that were bragging about how much money they were making ask him for money online. Now I'm seeing a lot of them. I'm seeing people that were like supposedly full-time comic book creators being like, Oh, I was full-time. And I want to get back to that. But in the meantime, can you, you know, like Venmo me some cash or something? You're not going to have another full-time job in comics unless you do it yourself, man. Like you're not, you're just not, uh, several people I'm seeing stories like this and it's heartbreaking. I mean, if you, you know, this was your career, this is what you did. This is all you wanted to do was make comics and, and you get there. And a lot of these people are in their forties and fifties now, and it's really hard to change careers and they didn't have a backup because, you know, comics are doing better than ever. It's raining money, all that other bullshit. They probably listen to people like Heidi McDonald. 
Um, everything's great, guys. It's all great. All you got to do is get a book deal through Scholastic. While someone who's been very close to that, I can tell you it's very, very, very hard. And most of these people are not going to make it. 99.9% <laughs> of these people are not going to make it. And uh, actually, Mags here, I think, had a book deal through Penguin or something. And even then, the money's not that good. Um, you know, I don't know what else to say. So let's look, let's look at this stupid article. Let's get to the let's get to the point here. Um, Screen Rant, Darkest Hour, Day of Blood, Energon 2023, proved Marvel and DC's ambitious storytelling is great for the comic book industry. In 2023, comic book publishers gravitated toward publishing big, ambitious stories, prioritized crossovers, and cultivated shared continuities. And this is good for the comic book industry. No, it's actually confusing as hell. Like when I was a kid, I remember the first crossover that I read or tried to read or tried to follow was actually Vision Quest. And uh, I think it was about the same time they were doing like an Inferno crossover too. But I was completely confused why I had to buy a comic book that I normally didn't buy to understand what was going on. You know, like Secret War was like its own kind of its own thing. And now Marvel does that like every freaking year because they're trying to get you to buy every book they put out. Or, you know, you could just wait for the trade where they're all collected in one very easy to read, you know, volume. Uh, so these are the points from Screen Rant. If this is written by a human and not AI, it's really hard to tell now. Marvel and DC have made major changes to their superhero titles in the past year, relaunching and rebooting many of their books again, again, while overall focusing on telling stories of an increasingly grand scope, like drag queens in Smallville and jerking off in the bathtub with your boyfriend in Superman. Is that what we're talking about? Okay. In 2023, Skybound's acquisition of Transformers and Joe licenses, not the properties, led to a successful reboot. Now, I have heard those are good, and I might check those out. I actually might check those out. Uh, you know, I got burnt by IDW Transformers, but uh, I might check them out. That being said, Hasbro's in a really bad place right now. We've been talking about that, too. They're not in a good place. Uh, Power Rangers comics have redefined the series by telling more mature stories. Yeah, Power Rangers are doing fine, you know, because it's got a, an existing fan base. Uh, Star Trek and Star Wars comics both have major crossover story events. Is anybody reading the Star Trek comics? Like, how is IDW still in business? You know, isn't IDW? So here's the thing with IDW. I heard that they were like closing their offices, but not really. Like, nobody knows what's going on. Do we have jobs? Do we not have jobs? I'm like, I don't know. Ask ask companies like Dreamwave. You know, are we still in business? Are we not in business? I don't know. You have to figure it out. Did you get paid this month? Then we're probably not in business anymore. That's how That's how that works. But this is like all up, up, up. Everything is fantastic. Skybound Entertainment acquired the rights to Hasbro's properties, G.I. Joe and Transformers, because IDW dropped the freaking ball, rebooting two of the iconic franchises alongside one another in the new Energon universe. Boom's doing Power Rangers better than ever. It's a year of reboots, relaunches, and reaching new heights. For the... What the fuck? Reaching new heights? Look at all these stores that are closing. We don't even know. We don't even know what's selling. What's the best selling comic? I don't know. Just guess. Reaching new heights. Reaching new heights. Marvel and DC have made major changes to their roster of titles. Marvel relaunched many of its books again. Well, Dawn of DC similarly gave fresh starts to nearly two dozen of its series again. More importantly, both of the big two publishers doubled down on their commitment to telling stories of an increasingly grand scope. Marvel has long teased the X-Franchise's Krakoan era couldn't last forever. It can't because it's dog shit, and it chased off a lot of, a lot of readers. Finally, the end began with the shocking events of the Hellfire Gala, the mutant prom, which left mutant kind of defensive for the first time in a long time. Night Terrors, that was a flop. This is like a... This has got to be AI. This is like, everything's great, guys. Now, I will say the Transformers, my understanding is Transformers and G.I. Joe is actually doing pretty good. But again, these are readers that don't, a lot of times, you know, when you have a licensed comic like this, whether it's Transformers or Sonic or something, you're pulling people in that don't normally read comic books. They might not read any other comics, but they'll buy the Transformers comics. They'll buy the Sonic the Hedgehog comics. You know, they'll buy Ghostbusters. 
it, they don't have to be that good. They'll just buy them because they collect Ghostbusters stuff and it's cool there's a Ghostbusters comic book. But these are not people that are going to turn around and buy Marvel and DC books. Uh, it's just like, come on. Power Rangers lore continue to be defined. This year's been great, guys. Legendary characters return to the forefront of Star Trek storytelling this year. Oh my God, guys, that's awesome. Comics became the ascendant medium for Star Trek in 2023. I would say... Uh, well, I guess Picard was lot, the year before, wasn't it? Season three of Picard. All right. IDW's relaunched Star Trek flag, flag flagship. That's basically it. It's a flagship. Uh, Star Trek flagship title, along with the Star Trek Defiant series, devoted the majority of the year to a galaxy span God War, which concluded in the Day of Blood. Is this the one? Like, I don't follow the Star Trek comics, the IDW Star Trek comics, but I know there's one where they had an alien being like, take that space Nazi fascists. Boom! Like, what is this? The freaking... Like, they didn't even have dialogue that cringy in the Orville. Okay? Which was originally a parody of Star Trek. Like, what the... F I, I don't care. I don't care. I want to see numbers. Show me numbers. A new threat revolutionized the current era of Star Wars stories. Yeah, it's called... <laughs> it's called the Ray movie. Um, Dark droids. What the fuck? Nobody cares. Is this... This is a nothing burger, but this is a story. This is a story on Screen Rant about how great comics are doing. Comics are doing fantastic, guys. They've never been better. It's all good. They're revitalizing all these crossovers and reboots, revitalizing the comic book industry. We know it's not true. Don't believe the lies. Uh, it's not true. I do believe Transformers is selling pretty okay, but it's not that... A couple of good books is not going to single-handedly turn everything around. Uh, but hey, if you want to support us, go out to shopclownfish.com. Shopclownfish.com. By Crimson Wrens, very good book. By previously on Clownfish TV, very fun stuff. And we got a lot more books coming. Uh, you know, if comic shops close, we're still going to sell books ourselves. That's how we're going to do it. Going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture, news views, and rants. We'll talk later.